So as soon as you walk in the place, it's pretty impressive. It's uh, not the coolest part as soon as you walk in, but going around in a circle here, they've got retail section, kind of like any other store. So you can buy a ball python, or you can buy a bearded dragon or a Brooks king snake, or basically anything you want. And then you go around and they've got a little bit of a gift shop too. So plushies and shirts and whatever else, and then all your supplies too. So it's not just a zoo and it's not just a gift shop, I guess, but also if you wanted crickets or feeders or whatever, they have that too, so it's your local store. But my favorite part is Adoption Island because animals that need a home, there's a hundred bearded dragons or ball pythons or corn snakes or leopard geckos that are gonna need a home because people buy them and then don't want them anymore. Someone moves off to school or whatever the case is and these guys will take them in. Snake Discovery will take them in and offer an adoption fee, a very low adoption fee, rather than making a bucket of money and selling them for 150, 200 bucks, it's a small adoption fee. So that is the coolest part to me, but that's not what you're here for. Let's head into the zoo. Okay, so this is the part that you actually wanna see. This is the zoo. So you walk out of the retail section and then you walk into a zoo. And this place is impressive. It doesn't look like any other zoo. It's not bars and cages, it's rocks from Universal Rocks. And it looks natural. It looks like a place that I don't know, like a cave system or something. There's plants on the walls. So we're gonna go through as many of these enclosures as we can. We're gonna ask Ed, we're gonna ask Emily, maybe we can get some of the staff, maybe some of the other influencers and ask them what their favorite animals are. And then I'll tell you what mine is. So let's get to it. So you walk in the entrance of the zoo and then you turn left and it's tortoises only. I can't even go in here cause it's tortoises only. And we've got a sulcata and a leopard tortoise in here. And the interesting part is they have free roam of the entire place. So sometimes you'll just find a sulcata tortoise where a sulcata tortoise shouldn't be, like in an alligator enclosure, well, underneath one anyway. I think that's because the leopard tortoise can't get up this lip, the sulcata can, and therefore it's just like a refuge because the leopard tortoise really likes the sulcata tortoise a lot. I guess maybe the most impressive part, as soon as you walk in, this big snake discovery sign, and then below it, a pond for turtles. So we've got map turtles in here, we've got soft shell turtles. And that's interesting because normally what you see is sliders and whatever else. You don't see soft shell turtles as soon as you walk into places, people's homes or whatever. So to me, that's interesting. They're kind of cool. And it's a huge enclosure and that's gonna be a theme of the episode because all these enclosures are massive. Okay, so let's get to it. Let's get to the top five most impressive, my favorite picks at the Reptile Zoo. And in between two, we'll talk about some other stuff too and talk about the staff picks, Ed's pick, Emily's pick, but this one we have to go over right now. Argentine boas, Phoenix and Ember. Interesting names and it makes sense. These are huge Argentine boas. The male is the small one, the female, is the big one. And these guys had a devastating fire. Their last house, the last keepers that had them, it was a devastating fire. Most of the snakes died, but these two didn't. So Ember and Phoenix makes a lot more sense now. This is a massive boa. Argentine boas are maybe one of the most beautiful species. I never talk about them on the channel because you never see them. And it's really a disservice to the species. So let's just enjoy this enclosure, see how big it is, see how tall it is, and probably one of the bigger enclosures in the zoo. This animal, although probably nine feet, maybe something around that size, looks tiny because this enclosure is taller than I am. It's deep enough that I could lay into it and it's wide too. This is how we should be keeping large constrictors. In my opinion, I think Ed and Emily are knocking this one out of the park and let's just enjoy these Argentine boas. So like I said before, the enclosures are freaking massive. Behind me, we've got some colubrids. They're in the dry Markon family, so they are giant colubrids. But seeing Kribos and indigo snakes in these enclosures that are so wide, I'm not joking, I could literally lay in them stretched out with my arms above my head and not touch the sides. You never see this. And I think that is so cool. And that's what Snake Discovery is kind of doing here. I'll say it again and again. Giant, realistic enclosures with lots of basking spots, a lot of places to hide, but these snakes aren't out. So let's move over here. What we've got here is number four, a black-headed python. Now I did a tour of a different zoo and I got a little bit of flack for not talking about the black-headed python. And I understand your concern because these guys from Australia are very cool. They are one of the only groups of species or in the group of species that don't have heat pits but are pythons. The other one being Woma pythons, which are right below us, are a little bit more common, a little bit cheaper to buy, and probably why they're more common. Very high food drive from both these species, very large pythons, they're from Australia. And by very large, I mean just like not huge, but larger than a ball python maybe. 
Basking platforms up top. These guys are, well, the entire day yesterday, looking over, and this black-headed python is not hiding. He's out in plain sight, available for you to look at. And so is the Woma Python too. So I think that they're very unique, very interesting, but I think they're cool because they're unique looking. They have the banding, the black head has that black head, and it's not something that you see really in any other type of snake. That's number four, let's move on. And here we go again. After you're done looking at the black headed Python, after you're done looking at the Woma, you got a whole nother row of these giant enclosures for snakes that really normally don't have enclosures this big. So let's go over a few and then we'll get to number three. Well, Vietnamese rat snakes we've got in here. We've got giant hognose snakes in here. The false water cobra is absolutely insane. So it's cool to see big colubrids getting what they actually need in the zoo. But you wanna see number three. And one of my favorites and always will is Allie. And yeah, I have a tagu of my own. I get it. She's an Argentine black and white tagu. And she's got this bumpy little tail, stumpy little tail, I guess is a better word and she's adorable. And last year we got to play with her quite a bit and now she's in the zoo where she belongs because people need to enjoy her too. Now, Argentine black and white tigers aren't for everybody, of course. These are large animals. They get over four feet a lot of the time and they need a huge enclosure. And that's exactly what she has here. I have an eight foot by four foot by three foot enclosure and this enclosure might even be bigger than that. So I think that she's cool. I think that uh, the story is interesting and unique and the fact that she's so placid and calm. Last year, just handling her, handing her off to Clint and she just didn't have a care in the world. It was like one of my dogs, except for Scaly and I didn't have to brush her and the fur wasn't in my couch for weeks. Allie's awesome. Ali's number three, but there's something in front of me that I really want to show you too. Ed, what is your favorite animal in your reptile zoo? Oh, my favorite animal has got to be the green trees. They have always been my favorite. They've always captured my imagination just with how they sit. That's actually two curled up next to each other right now. Um, that's my really dumb male that tries to eat himself every time I feed him. <laughs> and my girl who he's constantly pestering. Uh, we have one more back in there, um, the sarong female down on the bottom. She's kind of in a weird spot. She's usually hiding behind this wall. But I just love the way they look, the way they curl up in the, the branches. Look like just, it just, anybody who always looks at those always goes, that just, that's a snake that makes you want to have a story. Addition to the zoo and something that a lot of places don't have, is a bull snake just kind of photo bobbing me here, is they have a wall dedicated to animals that you can find locally in Minnesota. So fox snakes, western hognose snakes, bull snakes, obviously. Yeah, you're the star of the show, bud. Good for you. I think that's really cool. And this includes venomous snakes, too. Did you know you could find venomous snakes in a place where it's minus 40 in the winter? Now you do. That's right. We have the uh, goofiest named venomous snake ever to exist, but I think it's cool. Timber rattlesnakes are awesome. They used to occur where I live, but they are extinct in that area now. You can find them in parts of the north, sort of east of the US. There's actually a map right here. I don't know why I'm trying to sound smarter than I actually am. And a Western diamondback rattlesnake they have too. So this is something that you definitely don't wanna have if you're not an expert. This isn't a, a pet. This isn't a toy. This is something for a zoo with trained professionals. And that's why they're here at Snake Discovery. You don't want to get bit by them. It's a bad day. Well, well, well. What do we have? You think I was going to go a whole week without talking about monkey tail skinks? No. Monkey tail skinks <clears throat> are cool. I'm glad the ones that I have. These are actually really little, the ones that they have in the zoo. They're going to grow up and be the largest skink in the world. That's what monkey tail skinks are from the Solomon Islands. They, though, have a massive enclosure and something for me to aspire to. To give my monkey tail skinks something that is six feet tall and how six feet deep, I don't know how big this thing is, it's freaking huge, is a dream of mine. And I'm watching it in reality right here. Monkey tail skinks, like, you're gonna have to listen to me talk about them forever. And number two, I, don't, I can't pick. It's gotta be both the reticulated pythons because having giant snakes in your zoo is a task. These things are massive. Reticulated pythons can sometimes get to 20 plus feet. Now, I don't think that either of these are 20 plus feet, although they're probably pretty darn close, and they are girthy. These are big, big pythons, something that you wouldn't want to mess with by yourself. Always have a friend to help you out. We saw last week at Retic Fest how many people it takes to wrangle a big python, and these guys are just the same size. Now, I can't see them stretched out, but when they look like a cinnamon bun, the world's largest scaliest, anyway, you get the point. And the cool thing is these snakes look tiny 
in these enclosures. These are maybe the largest enclosures I've ever seen for reticulated python, and they do the same with their berm too. And that's what is important, and I try to drive this home in some of the other videos too. If you have a giant constrictor, don't go bare minimum. Don't put them in a six foot enclosure, and if you can go bigger than eight, that's great. But with a reticulated python, they're semi-arboreal snakes, even when they get big. And if people wanna tell me they're not, well, look at this. Both of these animals are up on perches. Both of them are off of the ground, and they're on the rock ledges, which are very strong, obviously, because these animals probably weigh 80 plus pounds. I can't pick between these two snakes. They're both number two, but really what you wanna see is number one, and I think you probably know what number one is. Let's just go to the favorite one. We know which one it is. And I think that the coolest part about the enclosure is that there's just a sulcata tortoise in the enclosure. This is my home. I live here. Go, I guess we're cuddling up with sulcata tortoises tonight. And let's go to number one. Well, actually, Emily and I have the same number one. Her favorite is this. So let's just let her do it. I think I've got to say my favorite reptile in the zoo is Rex, our American alligator. Rex, just because of her past, I mean, she was kept in a four foot wooden box for 27 years, so she's heavily stunted and has some other health issues as a result from going from that box to our basement for eight years. And now in our zoo, she's been with us such a long time and she's really traveled a journey uh, with us. And she's, I mean, the only animal we have that actually responds to our voice, or my voice anyway, so I can call her over, Rex, Rex, come here. Come on, Rex, come on, come on out. Come here, come on. Good girl, come all the way. You, you got it. Good girl. So she and I over the years have developed quite a strong relationship. So yeah, she's definitely my favorite. I think it's really cool what they did here. They have an enclosure that is huge for this alligator, which was stunted, by the way. You gotta watch Emily and Ed's channel, Snake Discovery. They do the whole story better than I could ever do. But the cool thing to me is that there's a plexiglass tube and you can just kind of like pop your head up to it because you feel like you're in the enclosure because you are. So you have a whole crawl space underneath the land area and then the water area is in front of you and you can see her right there and you can stick your head up. Just all in all, the coolest enclosure in the zoo, my favorite animal in the zoo. The story is beautiful, the animal is beautiful, the overbite is beautiful, Rex, that's how she would say her name, probably. And I think it's really cool that Ed and Emily uh, let me sleep and live in the crawl space, so I'm just gonna go back into my home now. So there you go, that is the Snake Discovery Zoo. This is the coolest experience. I wanna say thank you so much to Ed, Emily, Kim the manager, everyone who works here and has offered this opportunity for me to come in early today uh, before the meet and greet and do this. If you liked it, please hit like, please hit subscribe and tell me in the comments, what is your favorite animal at this zoo that you've seen in my videos or other videos or where, just let me know your favorites. And a special thank you as always to the Patreon supporters. It's because of you guys I get to do trips like this. You guys are freaking amazing. You got to see my enclosure way early. You got to see this video way early. You know about extra stuff in my collection, extra trips. Oh yeah, I announced the trips this week. International trips. I can't, anyway, only on Patreon for as little as a dollar a month. And uh, that's it. Because I do videos on Mondays and Tuesdays. That means I'll see you next Monday or no, Thursday. It's actually Mondays and Thursdays, I need to go home. See you next week.